The, the winds of change are blowing through Raider Nation and Silver and Black Today keeps you up to date with the latest news and views about your Las Vegas Raiders. Touchdown Las Vegas! With insight, opinions, and interviews. We're on the cutting edge of what's happening now. Now, now, with the latest on your Raiders and the NFL. Your host, Scott Goldbranson and Mo Bolton. Welcome back, everybody. It is time for another enthralling edition of Silver and Black Today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast covering the Las Vegas Raiders. If you're new to the show, do us a favor. Hit the subscribe button wherever you get your audio and subscribe to the podcast. Not only that, but if you're watching this on YouTube, see so you get to see you guys. Make sure you hit the subscription button, the notifications bell, and give us a thumbs up if you will. We appreciate that. It shows us. And I love the comments. Sometimes, you know, when you guys don't think we're on target, you comment and say, hey, I disagree with you guys. Here's why you're wrong. Love it. We love the discussion back and forth. And then we also hear praise, too. So we appreciate that as well. I say we because it's not just me. I'm Scott Cobranson, your host. But the other part of this show, the other half of this show is my good friend, my brother in arms here on Silver and Black today, that is Mo Moten. He's a senior NFL writer at Bleacher Report. You can also catch him on the various Turner networks on TV. <laughs> yes, you can catch him on TNT, True TV. Where it depends what's going on in the world, but but uh, you can catch him there on Fridays. He also has his Bleacher Report lives, which we'll talk about a little later in the show, so he can tell you when the next one is. And he is the Raiders columnist at sportsnot.com where i am also an editor writer and video host so you can check us all out there he's mo moton on x.com m-o-e-m-o-t-o-n i am at lv gully all right the intros are in mo it's coming to an end i don't have to hear any more mock draft crap here in about seven more days eight more days draft is next week big show today coming up next segment Baldy is back. Our good friend Baldy, Brian Baldinger, of course, NFL Network. He's also our NFL insider here at Odyssey. He's one of the team here at Odyssey, which is why we have him on the show so much. So we're glad to talk to him. We're going to get his input, his insight into the Raiders draft, what he thinks they're going to do at 13. And we'll talk to him about some of the other subjects as well. Mo, uh, I'm, I'm ready. You know, your other work, the writing side of things, I know you've been busy. You had another uh, piece go up, I think, on Bleach Report this weekend, this past weekend, didn't you, on the draft and kind of reassigning? Tell everybody about that, what they can read. So over on Bleach Report, I had actually had two columns back-to-back or one day apart. One, uh, this is not a Cowboys podcast, but Dallas Cowboys <laughs> may draft a quarterback, so I went through some options for them, and a lot of their options or would be options also for the Raiders when I, mm. when I wrote about Penix and Bo Nix, even Michael Pratt. Uh, the other piece was basically prospects who could fall in the draft or be available later than most people expect, because let's be honest about the draft. It's a crap shoot. Even the order, you can look at 50 mock drafts and none of them are completely right. Right. There's always a guy that falls that people are like, well, how did he fall to 20? How did he fall to 25? So I have five prospects on that list that could fall. And one of them, one of them is on a Raiders radar, could be on a Raiders radar. <laughs> J.C. Latham is a guy I think could slip a little bit simply because while you shouldn't scout the helmet, scout the player, Alabama tackles don't have a great track record. Raiders fans know this because they've experienced uh, yes. Alex Leatherwood, right? So a lot of Raider fans don't want J.C. Latham because they remember how poorly Alex Leatherwood panned out in Las Vegas. And I will say that J.C. Latham, while I understand that the track record for Alabama tackles isn't good. J.C. Latham is a very different prospect than Alex Leatherwood. Oh, yeah. Just, just, just pure size alone, that, for starters, the guy's like 340-plus. <laughs> uh, much different prospect than Alex Leatherwood. I actually like J.C. Latham as an option for the Raiders. I'm not saying he's my top option. That would be Talisi Fawaga. But I think J.C. Latham could be there for the Raiders and the Raiders. If they're thinking about drafting a tackle, he could be on the board and their pick at 13. Yeah, and Fawaga is gaining steam, which makes me yeah. nervous for the Raiders because he could end up going Minnesota if they don't go for a quarterback, which if they can't trade up for a quarterback, they have that need. I'm worried about Minnesota, one spot ahead of the Raiders, right, at 12? Um, I, go ahead. I'm actually worried if, if – now, if they want – if Minnesota wants to move him to guard, I could see it. Because yes. their tackles, their tackles are set. They got Darisaw on one side, and they got O'Neal on the other side. Right now, if they want to move him to the guard, I could see it happening. I'm a little concerned. <laughs> I, this is going to sound odd because 
Garrett Bowles is on one side with Denver, mm -hmm. and then now they signed McGlinchey to a big deal, but McGlinchey was a disappointment. Yes. Now, what if the Denver Broncos sign? That would be a kick in the balls if Denver <laughs> Denver traps Tweezy <laughs> Fawaka and they try to trade McGlinchey or Garrett Bowles because those guys aren't weren't they were there. Well, Bowles was there before Sean Payton got there, and again, McGlinchey was disappointing. Yeah. So I, I would just be Tweezy could go top ten, top twelve. I and that's the thing. Fawaga could play tackle in the NFL. I'm, I know. I mean, he'd be a great tackle. But there is a split. I think there's some teams looking at him who want to use him as guard. I'm glad guard. you brought that up. Mm -hmm. So, so if you're thinking, well, that team doesn't need a tackle, eh, they might use him guard. at guard, uh, and he would be do very well there. So, so either way, you're looking at that. Uh, but Fawaga there, obviously, and Latham, you're talking about. I had I had some discussion online with some Raiders fans. Mo, they were like, we can't, we can't. Draft an offensive. We've not drafted a good offensive lineman in 20 years. I'm like, uh, Colton Miller? Hello? Hello? People forget about Colton Miller. They forget about him. And it's like, <laughs> I, maybe because he's not like a out front media guy. You know, he's a really quiet yeah. kid. He's a good dude. But man, I mean, he's been he's been very solid. Yes, he's had some injuries, but all offensive linemen have injuries. It's a tough position. But don't forget about Colton Miller, folks. He's, he was a great <laughs> draft pick by the Raiders. People were not happy when they drafted him that high. I was going to say that. I was and, say that. and there's mm -hmm. some there. I mean, there was some validity to that, right? I think you saw during the Gruden Mayock years, they they drafted guys earlier probably than and we won't even get into Cleve Farrell, but they, they drafted players, I think, early. They always surprised all the prognosticators because like, oh, they are taking this guy there. They could have maybe got him in the second round. But again, you like a guy, you grab him. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think that the the. The, the, the tea leaves, and I think you're with me on this, Mo, the tea leaves read that the Raiders, if, if especially if they're looking at a quarterback, if it's Michael Penix, if it's Bo Nix, they might be able to get that guy in the top of the second round. They might need to trade a little bit there. Mm -hmm. But to me, it points, I really think that I'm thinking, number one, offensive lineman, number two, cornerback, and then third would be quarterback in the first round. At 13, if that's where they stay, and we're going to get into a report we'll talk about here in just a minute about some disagreements in the front office uh, in a second. But but to me, that's what I think is going to happen. I know everybody wants the quarterback. We've said on this show a million times, quarterback is the number one priority. But if the quarterback you think can get you there is not there at 13, or you can get him later, then you got to do what's best for the team. And I think I think that's the road we're on. There's always surprises, Mo. Somebody might suddenly want to trade, and the Raiders can move up and grab a guy. I don't know. But I just think that that's sort of where they're at because they need to get the core group together. And then you can always move on a free agent quarterback next year. I got to look. I forgot who's a free agent next year. But then also you look down the line and you say, hey, we got Gardner Minshew. We got Aiden O'Connell. They're going to compete. We'll bring in another third guy, whoever that is, and and see what happens in, in the spring. But to me, that's sort of where things are headed. It is. And I've been saying for months now that the Raiders are probably, in my opinion, going to draft an offensive lineman at 13. And a lot of people, as you said, have been talking about the quarterback. But you got to remember, head coaches usually want a player now. And they don't care about where they get him. They just want that. I want that player because I want to use that player for this specific B or, or role. General managers have to think long term. They have to think about value. Okay, can we get the – okay, you like that player, but can we get that player – in the second round. <laughs> okay, you like that player in the second round, but can we get him in the third round? And that's where overdrafting and 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 I'm gonna talk about 13th spot, right? So Michael mm -hmm. Penix got some buzz at his pro day. All of a sudden, everyone's like, Oh, he's not even gonna make it out of the top 10. <laughs> he might not even be there when the Raiders pick, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, I like hold on, pump the brakes a little bit. All right. I like Michael Penix. I'm gonna say this again. I like Michael Penix as an overall prospect. But to me, I think he's I've been saying this all along. Even after he beat um, the Washington Huskies, beat Texas, I said, I think he's a back-end first-rounder. Where I have Michael Penix right now, I think he goes anywhere from, you know, the back end of the first round to the early second round. So if you like Michael Penix, I know there's a risk because it only takes one team to, to pick him. But I strongly believe, looking at the draft order and looking at these teams' rosters, he's going to be – if you could, if you feel that you could trade up in the second round or yeah. trade back into the first round – or we move back in the first round and not pick at 13, just simply move back, get another draft pick. I would take Michael Penix in the twenties because I think he's going to, he probably going to be there. Now, again, there's a risk. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's all about value because 
you, if you can get the offensive tackle, if you can get a, a top offensive tackle and get Michael Penix, to me, that's the best case scenario. Right. And and I really believe, again, I told you last show that the team I really worry about with Penix at the bottom of the first round is the Rams. Rams. Um, and they're in the 20s, I think 19, 20, 21, 19. something like that. So if they're, if they're, if I worry about them past that, I'm not as worried, but to your point, you know, if you think about the Raiders trading up in the second round or even in the bottom of the first round with one of those better playoff teams, you could, you could you, trading, trading your number two, uh, or your number two and a six next year to get higher in the second round. That's the kind of compensation I've seen over the last couple of years. You're not having to trade a two and a three next year for a, a high two you're not going to do that but if they could if they get there and they trade even if they trade into the bottom of the first round and give up uh, a number one next year or a number two next year because they like Penix and they get him at 19 let's say they trade with the rams because the rams could use some picks that's fine because you're still you're going to have you're going to have two first round draft picks you still hold on to your second this year to get that offensive lineman or cornerback whichever way they go and that puts you in good shape. So, so you're right. I think everybody's looking at the 13th pick and and up. They're not looking at what else you can do when you get into the second round and trying to move up in the top of the second round or the bottom of the first. The other thing is I hear the pushback that says if he's your guy, Michael Penix is your guy, then you should feel comfortable taking him at 13. And, mm -hmm. and we just talked about this, that you can have your guy, but you also have to look at value, tap into your intel because teams are tapping in to see – you know, where, where other teams may have Michael Penix on their board. If your guy is a late round first pick, don't take him at the top of the first round. <laughs> it's about that. It's again, it's about value because then you're yeah. passing up a player who would be great value in that spot for a player you may have been able to get later on. And again, I know it takes two to tango to make a trade, but a lot of times these teams have deals in place that is, you know, they'll call the Eagles and say, Hey, you know, if such and such is available at this spot, We'll move back with you. And usually those 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 agreements are made in good faith because if a team burns you, that stuff gets out. That okay, oh, you yes. don't want to do a draft day deal with that team because they're gonna burn you on draft day. So I know a lot of teams say, Well, you can renege on those agreements. And I will say that GMs and front office executives talk. And if you burn a team behind the scenes, that yeah. stuff gets out. And you get other jobs. So you're gonna be if you if your plan right. is to stay in the NFL. And you're a coach here or you're a GM here, just like Tom Telesco's with the Chargers right now. He's with the Raiders. If he burns somebody with the Chargers and he comes to the Raiders, you think they're going to deal with him? No. So you got to keep it going. Now, you might lose a trade to somebody or whatever. That might put a little bit of a negative in your mouth. But even if it was a good deal at the time you did it and they didn't screw you, you're going to do business with them. I mean, it's just the same like you and I. When we go to a local store, we're going to a local store to buy something and they treat us like crap. Guess what? We're not going to go back. And the <laughs> reputation's ruined, right? So that's the way it goes. But speaking of kind of where the Raiders are going, report came out over the weekend, Mo. Tony Pauline of Sportskedia, NFL insider, who's been accurate sometimes. And that's the thing with insiders, guys. Mo and I are not insiders. We don't claim to be. We don't try, oh, my source is all over the place. You know, some people like to do that every time they say something. We don't do that. But NFL insiders, I don't care if it's Schefter, if it's, you know, Rappaport, whoever it is. They're not 100% right. And I'm not saying they should be. And I'm not criticizing them for not being 100% right. You get the information from trusted sources. And those trusted sources, boom, you nail it sometimes. And those trusted sources, something changes or something's not true for whatever reason. Um, and it happens. So to Tony Pauline reported this. I'm going to read the quote for you guys out there. If you didn't already see the report, our fans are pretty plugged in. So I would imagine they have. But it's a, he said, quote, there's also been talk about the Las Vegas Raiders wanting to move up for a quarterback. The latest uh, from Raiders draft meetings is that head coach Antonio Pierce wants to trade up for a signal caller, yet general manager Tom Telesco is leaning heavily toward sticking with a second-year quarterback, Aiden O'Connell, and free agent Gardner Minshew. So, in essence, what he's saying is what he's hearing is that Pierce wants to move up, not surprised. Again, Mo just said it a moment ago. You're a head coach. You have a short window to succeed or you're gone, just the way it goes. Everybody loves Antonio Pierce did good job at the end of last season, but you know what? If you go out next year and you and you crap the bed, and then the next year after that you crap the bed, guess what happens? You're gone. So he has urgency. This is this is reality. I get it. Whereas Tom Telesco is playing a longer game, right? He wants a general manager has to build a team over time. General managers do not usually get fired 
in one or two years. Um, I know it happened last time for the Raiders, but usually it doesn't happen that way. You get three or four years. If things don't improve, then you can find yourself gone. So anyway, you look at this, Mo, you look at this report, and I'm not doubting that maybe there was discussions that's, and they might have had a discussion back and forth saying, well, I think we should move up. And Telesco saying, well, I don't know if we should move up. I think we should build the long-term value of the team and and fill some of these roles, get by with what we have, and then we'll make a quarterback unless we can do it this year. So I think there's a lot of caveats here. And I think that depending on the day in the building up on Raiders way in Henderson, it could go either way. It could go either way, but you know, I, as you see me looking down, I'm actually talking to my good friend, Brent Sobleski of Bleacher Report. And he, we're talking about, we're actually talking about this Raider rumor that's going to probably since by now it's made its rounds through Raider Twitter. But <laughs> I, I feel like, and he, he made this good point that we're at the point of the off season. What do we always say, Scott? It's line, line season, season right? So there are things that get out that teams want out. Right. And there's some misdirection. There's a lot of misdirection going on. Teams are trying to throw other teams off the path because mm -hmm. they're targeting certain players and they don't want teams to know what their draft plans are. No one's revealing their draft plans at this point in the offseason. Right. We, we don't have eyes and ears into these discussion rooms about what teams are going to do or what they want to do. I, I highly doubt that if there was a strong disagreement between Tom Telesco and Antonio Pierce, that it would get out now. Now, if you told me this during the Mayock Gruden years, I yes. would believe it because there were a lot there at that time. There were a lot of leaks. I don't know if you remember this, Scott, and you oh, probably yeah. do. I think a day or two before the draft in 2019, Ian Rappaport gets on t television and says the Raiders are going to make a surprise move, and they sent their scouts home. Remember that, Scott? Yes, I'm I sure remember that. Remember that. <laughs> and 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 we're thinking, oh, smoke screen. Oh, they're just throwing nuggets out there to throw people off. And you get Cleveland Farrell number four. So they, they were dead on with their report. It was a surprise. <laughs> it wasn't definitely a surprise. Not a great one. <laughs> Not a good one, but uh, a surprise nonetheless. In this case, I, I. Not that I doubt Tony Pauline's sources because, you know, people respect Tony Pauline and even Sobleski says he, he's got to know Tony and there's a reason for this coming out and, and you just have to figure out what that reason is. And I, and, and again, he brought up a very good point that we, we've, we've been talking about Raiders fans want a quarterback, get the quarterback, get the quarterback, get the quarterback. What if they don't go quarterback? This is kind of like a, a, a kind of, just in case we don't get our quarterback, just know that Tom Telesco wanted to stay with Aiden O'Connell type of deal. So you you kind of get to – not to say Tom Telesco becomes the fall guy if Raider fans get mad that they don't draft a quarterback early, but it's kind of like, okay, remember that report that said Aiden, that Tom Telesco kind of wanted to stick with Aiden O'Connell? I guess he mm -hmm. won that battle with Antonio Pierce versus trading up. Well, and remember, <laughs> Raider Nation is so passionate. And based on – this is completely – non-scientific but based on the feedback and the conversations i have online with our listeners and viewers raider fans raider nation uh 50 will be pissed if they don't take a quarterback and 50 percent will be pissed if they don't take an <laughs> offensive tackle so either way there's going to be disappointed people but i do think going back to what i said mo i could see a source inside the raiders telling tony this because they're in a meeting let's say and and pierce and telesco are going back and forth having a discussion meriting the value of of go let's trade up and get a quarterback no let's stay pat and get something else and get a quarterback later or we can stick with the quarterbacks we have that could be a discussion in a room and it doesn't mean it was resolved it means you're bringing up scenarios i would hope that pierce and telesco have really open and animated and sometimes angry conversations with each other about the direction they should go that's how you get to good it's called good friction you want good friction in an organization that's what that's what Gruden didn't have with Mayock because Mayock had no control. Technically, we heard this in his interview he did recently. So you look at that with John Middlecuff. When you look at that, you say to yourself, OK, you want the disagreement because you got to come. Tom Telesco has got to make a decision with his coaches, with his coaches um, input. So you got to get the input. And that doesn't always mean that it's going to be an agreement. Right. And then you have to, and we talked about this with Gruden and Mayock that how much say did, Gr did Mayock have with Gruden? Was right. there was there a healthy friction? So as you use the word friction, was there a healthy friction between the two? Mm -hmm. There were some doubts there whether there was some healthy friction when the Raiders made their early picks because the early picks seemed like Gruden picks were a lot of people think the later picks were Mayock picks because Mayock 
seems like a more knowledgeable draft mind than Gruden. And, and some of those middle late round picks hit he, Max Crosby, Hunter Renfro for his first couple of years. Yep. So I don't know what the dynamic is between, between Tom Telesco and Antonio Pierce, but I think you mentioned this last month that, and I think I agree with you too, that these guys are, you know, on the surface, they couldn't be more polar opposites. Correct. You know, Tom Telesco seems more like the button up white collar guy. Antonio Pierce, more of the urban type of guy. And then they have to, you know, not not to say they have to come from the same walks of life to make the same football decisions or come to mm-hmm. agreements, but they have to come to a middle ground on some of these decisions that they make. And the quarterback decision is probably not probably is the most important one. But again, I don't think the option will be there on the table for the Raiders anyway to trade up for a quarterback. And if it's not, it makes the decision a lot easier on the, on the Telesco okay. side reportedly <clears throat> that. They just they just run it back with Aiden O'Connell and add Gardner Minshew to the mix with a maybe a, a, a middle round quarterback they draft. Well, and that's where Tom Telesco understands. And I think even for those of us in the media and even for fans, it's hard, especially in a draft like this this year. It's hard to trade up. Like it's not easy. And and you could say, well, give them whatever they want. Okay, you want to give them three number ones. Okay, fine. But what if it's more than that? What if the opportunity isn't even available to you, right? Which is what you just said. So I think that 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 you have to consider that and you have to consider Tom Telesco thinks through that. And, and with all due respect to Antonio Pierce, he doesn't know because he's never been in that process. He's not been a head coach. This is the first time he's going through that process. So I'm sure he's learning a ton and going through his first draft, he will learn. He's going to have a list of players he wants and Tom Telesco is going to try to go get them for him if he agrees. But that doesn't mean you can get him because remember, we always go back. You got to have a trade partner. You can't, it's not a one way deal. You got to have two people willing to do it. You have to come to an agreement and you also have other competition. There's a lot of teams who want a quarterback, but I do think the Raiders have to be really smart with this draft because remember, guys, they've made progress, really good progress on defense. Offense needs a lot of work, but on defense, they've made good progress. So if you can do more, to help build your offensive line, get that other cornerback, get an interior defensive lineman, get a wide receiver, great. Then you start helping yourself. Maybe you're not all the way there yet, but at least you're looking long-term. And even though Antonio Pierce wants to win right away to keep his job, I get it, uh, he also will understand that if you can't get who you want, you're not going to be able to get. The Jaden Daniels thing, I just think it's impossible. Maybe not impossible. Maybe there's a 1% chance. I don't want to dash your hopes completely, but that's where I'm at with it. So we'll see what they do. Right. And I, and I've said this, I said this on the X over the past weekend that I, you know, I've seen so many drafts and there's always surprises. So I wouldn't rule out that the Raiders move up and they grab Jaden Daniels. I, I, I'm not going to say it's impossible or that it it can't happen, but I don't think it will simply because I, I really honestly believe the Washington commanders are going to draft him. I do too. I really do. I, I really honestly think Cliff Kingsbury wants it because not to say he's comparable to Kyler Murray, but dynamic in the sense that, you know, he's a threat with his legs and his arm, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Heisman trophy winner coming out of college. There are some similarities there to what Cliff Kingsbury had in Arizona. And I think Cliff Kingsbury is going to want that in Washington, not to dash your hopes for other fans, but just prepare for, for you not to have Jaden Daniels. If you get Jaden Daniels jump for joy, it'll be great. Do cartwheels. But just know that Penix and Knicks and even and, Rattler, Spencer Rattler could be options for you. Yeah. And and Mo, one last thing before we hit the break, because we got Baldy coming up after this, is is the fact that I as crazy as it sounds, because I've said, hey, book it. Caleb Williams going to the Bears. Done. Could could he take, could they take Jaden Daniels number one? They could. I like I could see that happening. I think that's less than a 40% chance, but I think because <laughs> Again, and then, so, so you're the commanders. Who you get? Oh, boy, I want that Heisman Trophy winner or that Heisman Trophy winner, <laughs> right? What a choice those two top teams have. So could go either way. But I think it'll end up being Caleb Williams number one, but you just never know, man. You just never know. All right, well, we're going to ask somebody who knows a lot about the draft, losing a lot of fo- football, and that's Brian Baldinger. Baldy's coming up next here on Silver and Black today, exclusively here on Silver and Black today. So you can... Uh, hear what he has to say about the Raiders situation, what he believes. Remember, the last time he was on the show, this is what I'm going to bring up to him, Bo. He said, you got to go get the quarterback. You gotta... So we'll ask him about <laughs> his statement and what he would do if he was in the Raiders position. We'll also I'll talk to him, too, about his time with uh, with the Condor. Of course, he was on 
the podcast along with Max Crosby. So we'll ask him how his experience was there. It looked like it was a lot of fun. So Brian Baldering coming up next. Baldy is on the show. You're with Mo and Scott. This is Silver and Black today. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, Silver and Black today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast. Also heard on the bet in Las Vegas, if you listen to us on the radio, so thanks for that. We are back. We're talking Raiders NFL draft, and to do that, we bring in one of our family here at Odyssey. That, of course, is Brian Baldinger. You can catch him also on the NFL Network, as I do. You can also catch him on Max Crosby's podcast, which we'll ask him about his experience, because <laughs> I enjoyed that show immensely, so we'll have fun with that, too. But, Baldy, thanks for being back with us. It's draft time, man. Are you, are you just ready to go? I am. I am ready. I'm always ready like, because it's the new crop and we really don't know, d despite all the information that we have from all the different sources, we really don't know who's going to be the next Puka Nakua. We, I mean, we really don't know who's going to be the next Brock Purdy. We, we, we think we might know, uh, but we really don't until they start playing the next level. So it's the intrigue and somewhere where these guys get drafted, who drafts them, who changes a team's fortune the way the Houston Texans were changed a year ago. Amazing. And they continue that. They've, they've had an amazing offseason. Yeah, they're they going to be a blast to watch. Baldy, when we talk about the Raiders, the last time we had you on during the season last year, you said something really emphatically. And I want to get your take on this leading into this draft where the Raiders are sitting at number 13 in the first round. And that is, you said they got to go get a quarterback. You got to go get a quarterback. Now, they signed Gardner Minshew free agent in the offseason as, as a vet to come in. I think it was a good signing for this team to do. And Tom Telesco and, and Antonio Pierce recognize the value he can bring to a team in a locker room. But when you look at the Raiders sitting there at 13, knowing that they have needs on the offensive line, they have still some needs, I think, on the interior of the defensive line and on the outside at cornerback. If you're the Raiders at 13, what do you do there? What do you think they're going to do? Do they still go after that quarterback if he's there? Or do you think that they go for other needs when it comes to that 13th pick? Here's the names of the quarterbacks who have won the last nine Super Bowls in order. Brady, Manning, Brady, <laughs> Mahomes, Brady, Brady, Mahomes, Stafford, Mahomes, Mahomes. I mean, those who won the Super Bowls. So I mean, it's just those are just facts. Like only a couple guys win Super Bowls, and if it's about winning Super Bowls, I would be surprised if Aiden O'Connell or Gardner Minshew joins that list. Like I'm just, I would just be surprised. So if you think that one of these guys that are in this draft or two of these guys are in this draft, you have you have to at least be as thorough as you possibly can and exhaust every scenario possible to try to maximize that ability to get one of them if you think they can be that guy. Otherwise, you do what you just explained. If you don't think Michael Penix or J.J. McCarthy or Bo Nix or some of these guys that might not be one or two, like if you don't think they're that, then go build your offense line. Go get a defensive piece. I mean, that's the way I would look at it. Don't waste your time on trying to develop a quarterback that at the end of the day is just going to be another guy that gets drafted – win some games, but doesn't get anywhere near the postseason and winning important playoff games. So, Baldy, that's the practical approach. I'll, I'll ask Baldy, I'll ask you to be the GM of the Raiders just for now, just for today, for the fans out there. Mm -hmm. You have Aiden O'Connell. You signed Garner Minshew. I've read some comments recently that you, you know, talked about Aiden O'Connell in a positive light. But there's been a lot of buzz about the Raiders maybe interested in Michael Penix. Of course, there's buzz that they maybe want to trade up. Jaden Daniels has the connection with Antonio Pierce, but that may not be an option because the commanders need a quarterback, the Patriots need a quarterback, the Bears obviously need a quarterback. If you're sitting there at 13, is it imperative that you draft a quarterback there in that spot, even if you think a Michael Penix could be available in the second round? Do you just draft the quarterback because it's a biggest, it's the biggest need for you? Or are you rolling with Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew basically for the next year and saying, okay, we'll look to 2025 to draft the quarterback early? And, you know, like when I look at Michael Penix Jr., he's my second favorite quarterback in this draft after Caleb. Like I, I don't know what game somebody watches where they don't think this guy can be a great player. And in Raider tradition, he's the best deep ball thrower in this draft. Now, if Mr. Al Davis is listening to this podcast or he wants to see the Raiders win the AFC West next year, I mean, they want it by being – a deep ball throwing football team. There's the Super Bowl trope. Like this guy fits that mode. I mean, if you said to me, Mo, if you said, 
All right, J.J. McCarthy is like this, you know, meteoric rise in quarterback. If you tell me put J.J. McCarthy in Michael Penix Jr.'s offense at Washington, would they go 24-3 and three and be on the break for a national championship? I don't believe it. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe he would. But that's that was a deep ball attacking offense. Roman Dunze is going to be probably the second receiver taking this draft. He's a star. But Jalen Polk, Jalen McMillan, like – they're all going to be good. Their offense coordinator is now coaching the Seattle Seahawks offense. Like, I I kind of think that if you want to overtake the Kansas City Chiefs, you better find a way to, to put a deep passing offense in and to big, you know, put big points up on the board the way Washington did. Interesting. So so then Baldy, so 13, and I think I think you're right. I think there's a lot of people who for some reason, and Mo and I talk about it here all the time. You know, the, 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 the kind of attitude around Penix in, in the general population has been up, down, up, down. And of course, the national championship game, look, it's one game. And you know, and we all know that NFL teams, general managers and scouting staffs, they're looking at tape from his career. So one game doesn't matter as much. Right. And you look at him. And so so if you're GM, then you're saying you would you would have no problem taking him at 13. I wouldn't. But I mean, you know, you can talk about the Michigan game. He did cut the score right before halftime, 17-10, with an unbelievable throw on his third option, you know, at the inside the 10-yard line. You, you have to factor that throw in there. But I don't know how many teams would have beaten Texas. Like, Texas is a juggernaut. You just look at what they have. Look at the draft that's coming out of Texas. Mm-hmm. Look at the receivers. Look at the defensive tackles. Look at the talent on that football team. And they won that game. I mean, they knocked Texas out of the tournament. I don't think anybody thought. Texas was going to lose. But Michael Penix played one of the best games any quarterback played all year in that game to get there. So you have to factor that in. But I don't know. I just – like you just watch these guys year in, year out. You're like, that guy. And then you watch him run. Like, he didn't run a lot at Washington. But when you run a 4-4-6, it's a 4-4-6 at 218 pounds. He's got a big frame. Like, how many quarterbacks – like, I asked Kyler Murray one time how fast he was. He goes, I don't know. Baldy. I ran I ran back in high school in the four twos. I go – He's probably a 4-2, but maybe Lamar. Like, maybe there's a couple guys that play that position that can run that fast. But he can. But he didn't do it because he was beating people from the pocket. You know, the way we, we think you're still supposed to do it, to survive in this league. And you talk about the injuries or the age. All that stuff is real. But he has played 27 straight games without an injury. So maybe it's behind him. I don't know. Maybe. And he, you know, like all the physicals he took to combine, all that stuff. Like he passed with, like there's nothing lingering from any former injury. So I don't know. He's, he's looks like a clean, and then you talk to him, like this is a sharp kid. Like he's really sharp. And I don't know if Kalen DeBoer is the head coach at Alabama right now. I don't know if Ryan Grubb is the offense coordinator for Mike McDonald in Seattle. If it's not for Michael Penix, he elevated a program that was four and eight and dreadful in the Pac 12 and put him on the brink of a national championship. Agreed. I can't I can't argue with anything about that one. Now, now, Baldy, as a former offensive lineman, I'm sure you have a soft spot for that group position group, right? So let's say the Raiders don't go with a quarterback. I've been on the train saying that the Raiders need to address their offensive line because they have some question marks on specifically on the right side. Yeah. Jermaine Luminar, as you know, is in New York with the Giants now. They didn't sign, re-sign Greg Van Roten. So that right side is a big question mark. So if they don't go quarterback, I think it, you know, there's a discussion about cornerback. But I think offensive line is the way to go because you got to protect your quarterback, right? Mm-hmm. Now, wh- who are the, some of the prospects that you think could be options for the Raiders? And some Raider fans don't like J.C. Latham, but I, I put his name out there. T.C. Fawag is a guy I like, but I'll let you have the floor. And- well, I mean, J.C. Latham fun. is a perfect fit. I mean, honestly, he's a perfect fit in everything that they want to do. They want to pound the ball like he's the guy that moves bodies. Uh, but Taliese Fuaga could be a guy easily at 13 that could be available. But either one of those guys. Look to me, this is an Alex Leatherwood mistake. It's not, no, I'm, I'm looking at two guys. Everybody thought that this is a guy that was going to be a mistake because he didn't love the game, and it's proven. But either one of these guys, I feel you can plug and play right now, Mo, and you're going to get an upgrade at offensive tackle. If you want to spend your 44th pick on Cooper Beebe at Kansas State, he might be there at that. Like, go fix it. Go fix it. Whoever's the quarterback, you know, whoever wins the job, Gardner, whether it's Aiden, whoever. Like, they're going to have a chance to, to run it pretty good with those two guys, and they're going to have more time to get it to Devontae and the receivers out there in the tight end. So I think you could fix it with the 13th and 44th pick in this draft. 
Yeah, good stuff, uh, Baldy. And you know, the one thing too, we've we've heard recent reports just this past weekend that there was disagreement, which I always find funny because any business you're in, you're going to have what I call healthy friction, right? You're going to yep. have, you have sure. a coach, a coach who's focused much more on the short term because they want to keep their job. The, the average shelf life of a coach, what in the NFL now is three years. And then you have the GM who's looking long-term trying to put all the chess pieces on the chessboard. When you hear things like we heard this past weekend that, that Antonio Pierce and Tom Telesco aren't necessarily on the same page with quarterbacks, um, that might be part of the discussion. But when you think about that, weighing the long-term building of a roster and then a coach's concern, which is, hey, I need some guys to go out, execute, and win now, what's the right balance there? And how does a coach and a GM come to that when it comes to the draft? Well, if you just look at those two, okay, if you just look at Antonio right now and you look at Telesco, right? Telesco drafted, okay, Justin Herbert. I mean, we all think that he is a great talent. I mean, he was drafted behind Tua. Nobody thinks that you know, that Justin isn't still a better prospect. And then Antonio, he's got great history with Jaden, you know, Daniels at, at, at Arizona State. So, and they're completely opposite type players. In fact, you know, Jaden Daniels at Arizona State was not a runner, like we saw at LSU to the point where he easily won the Heisman Trophy this year. Um, so we're talking about two different, completely different styles of quarterback. Both are capable of winning in this business. Um, now, one is more capable of winning long term because generally one stays healthier long term. But, you know, the health of a quarterback isn't dependent because one guy stays in the pocket, one guy doesn't. We, we've seen that. But, I mean, I just think that all that stuff, especially we're still 10 days out, is, is healthy discourse. And the, the best GM I've ever seen in my time was Ozzie Newsom. Mm -hmm. And Ozzie, like I know guys that came out of Baltimore. It seems like everybody comes out of Baltimore. <laughs> But Ozzy was a great trainer of these guys. And he would demand, like, look, if, if you like, you know, if you like Michael Penix Jr. over Jaden Daniels, stand up in front of this room and tell us why. Like, in front of, like, peer pressure, everybody's against you. You sell us Michael Penix. Like, that's, like, that, some guys can't do that. They can't handle, like, the, the attacks and the criticism and everything that's coming at you. But that's how Ozzy trained all these guys that are now running Joe Douglas, Andy Weidel, you know, Horitz, like all these guys are out there running these programs right now. Like that's how it was. And so I think that's a, a great thing. In fact, if everybody was just in agreement, that would be disturbing mm -hmm. to me. Absolutely. So speaking of agreement, and disagreement, the lines came out. I don't know if you're a betting man ball or not, but the Raiders are at about <laughs> six and a half wins. So Vegas isn't very high on the Raiders, and I, and I suspect it's because of the quarterback position. There are question marks there. Now, last time we've had you on since then, a lot has changed. Antonio Pierce, now the full-time head coach. They bring in Tom Telesco as the GM. Devontae Adams came out and said he likes the direction of where this team is going. He's not going anywhere. What do you feel about the direction of this football team? Are are you are you confident that they can compete and be a playoff team in 2024? Or is there too are there too many question marks on the roster for you right now to kind of buy the Raiders as a playoff team or borderline playoff team? Well, I mean, first of all, it's addition by subtraction. Everybody that was there before Antonio Pierce, <laughs> DM, coach, like it was addition by subtraction immediately. And we saw the effects immediately. Defensively, mm -hmm. they immediately got better. Um, you know, and they kept that staff on that side of the ball, Patrick Graham. Rob Leonard, Rob, you know, Ryan. I mean, that staff is there bringing Will Lutz. Like, I think they're in better position, just a mental health standpoint, walking in the building every day. Like there is a different, a completely different energy. Um, they love Antonio Pierce, but I think that's great. But like, how hard are you going to play? How much are you going to sacrifice? All this, you, do, you, do you truly want to smoke a cigar after every victory next year? Like maybe that tradition continues. It's pretty cool to me. But I think they're in much better position now. And look, I mean, if Gardner Minshew wins the job, I mean, he was seven and six as a starter in Indianapolis last year on a roster that wasn't great, but he played really well for much of his starts. Um, but I know O'Connell showed some last year, the way that we, he showed at Purdue, and he had a good preseason. So let those guys battle it out. I think the roster around, especially if they address the offensive line, I think the roster around, you know, I think we saw Tyree look dreadful to start the season, but he wasn't like that at the end of the season. Last year, he coming off a broken foot. I get it. But he looks like he's going to be part of that culture. You got Christian Wilkins. It was a big statement. Like, you know, this, this defense was much better when Antonio took off and he did his style thing and Patrick could do his thing um, more so. 
Like, I think they beat the Chiefs last year on Christmas. I, I feel like they're in a better place right now to go compete. I don't know if they could take down the Chiefs. I feel like they could go compete in the AFC right now, really compete. I don't know if that's 10 wins, if you get to 11, but I feel like they could be in that realm this year. Nice. Baldy, before we let you go, we appreciate you being generous with your time today. Uh, you went out, you were on the Rush, Max Crosby's podcast. It was a great discussion. I could tell. Yeah. I'm sure you had even more fun off camera. But uh, it, fans love Max Crosby. Raider Nation loves Max Crosby, and you can see why. But what I'd love to get from you is sitting in a room with him, talking football as you did, uh, just tell folks how focused this guy is and the mentality he has and why – he has become the player he's become. Well, first of all, the guys that are in the room with him are all former teammates of his from college. So there's just a loyalty right there. Then when we're doing the podcast, he'd already had his thumb repaired and his knee repaired. All right. So this isn't even the Super Bowl yet. This is the week of the Super Bowl. So it's just turned February. He didn't go on vacations with his wife. He didn't go like he went to L.A., got his surgeries done so that he could get to rehab and get into his all season as quickly as possible. So the commitment, it never ends. The Michael Jordan tattoos, like he wants to be truly the best that's ever played. Not just the best Raider, not the best defensive end. He wants to be the best that's ever played. So, and there's everything that he does every day is geared around that. So for example, I gave him, I put him in touch with this guy who trained, it was, he trained Aaron Donald back at Pittsburgh. He trained mm -hmm. him in the off season like hand-to-hand -hand combat type training. I got to meet him last year. Like I put him in touch with Max. They're in touch. They're going to spend, like whether he's going out there to Vegas or Max is going to come to Pittsburgh, I don't know exactly, but he's going to work with them this offseason to try and fine-tune something else to get better at. Um, nobody's played the volume of plays that Max has played. Doesn't ever want to come off the field. Like, And the only way you can do that is if you practice like a banshee every day. And that's what he does. He and so – Antonio has him like he wants to win the all energy team every single day. He wants to out energize anybody at any position or, or out energize the secretaries, the people that take care of the, <laughs> the turf out there, you know, practice. like that's just who he is. It's hard not to love Max Crosby. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, make sure you follow uh, Baldy on X at Baldy NFL. Also check out his podcast. Make sure you subscribe as well get some good stuff there baldy as always my friend thank you so much and we'll talk to you down the line i look forward to it guys yep enjoy the draft man let's talk afterwards we will thanks so much well, there you go brian baldinger our guest here always fun mo always great insight just you know fantastic we certainly appreciate him being here all right we're going to jump to a break when we come back we'll have the last segment here on this edition of silver and black today don't go anywhere Welcome back. Wow, what a spot, man. I love Baldy coming on. Always so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed that. We certainly do, uh, and we're uh, very lucky to have him here at Odyssey. Of course, Silver and Black today. Scott Branson, Mo Moten back with you to close out the show. Do us a favor. If you don't already subscribe to the show, do so wherever you get your audio. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that subscription, the notifications bell, and give us a thumbs up if you will. Mo, Baldy's always a great time, always great insight, and uh, never disappoints. Had to throw the grenade in his lap and talk about the quarterback position. I know some some fans are going to love to hear what he had to say, and some fans didn't probably like what he had to say. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's going to be a polarizing topic. And and because we've battled it. A lot of people said we haven't given Aiden O'Connell enough props for how he finished the previous season. He should be given a leg legitimate shot to start in 2024. And then you have some fans, as we talked about, says you got to get the quarterback because he's not the guy. He's a backup. Right, And I, I'm of the idea that you let him compete, not let him, he's earned the right to compete. Absolutely. And if he wins, great, because that means that he's made a terrific leap during the offseason. If he doesn't win the job, okay, you got Gardner Minshew, you sign him, he's basically a bridge guy, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And if you draft a quarterback in the middle rounds, a Spencer Rattler, Michael Penix, Bo Nix, then you have also a guy you could develop behind them and who could take another leap in 2025. So to me, it's right now is giving yourself options until you find the guy. Exactly. And that, and that's the thing, Mo, we don't, nobody really knows what they're going to do. I mean, even Baldy said that, right? He's look, you, 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 there's different approaches. It's a new regime, new coach, new GM. We can go off and you did a great piece about Telesco's drafts I, uh, back a few weeks ago. So you can get, you can infer some of that things, but we're just guessing. 
we're guessing. And and during this time, I know some people are like, I don't even want to hear it. I'll just wait for the draft. We're just trying to talk through it and see. And we'll see. We might be right about something. We might be way off on some things. Who knows? They might surprise us there as well. Uh, by the way, on Thursday's show, we do the Raider Nation mailbag. Great voicemails we're getting to take part in that. Leave your number, or excuse me, leave your name, your comment, where you're calling from, 702-900-7869. That's 702-900-7869. Get that in here in the next day or so so that we can have it for Thursday's show. You can make it. We have we have our serial callers, Jacob from Fresno and those guys, of course. Fresno. Tarek, uh, <laughs> they all call in, which is great. But if you haven't called in before, please do. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us what you think the Raiders should do in the draft. Tell us what you thought about Baldy's appearance here on the show. Mo, I know you got stuff coming up this week. Let everybody know what's going on in the world of one Mr. Midtown Mo. First of all, I want to thank everyone who joined me on my Bleach Report live show on Monday talking about Raiders sleeper targets. I will, if you missed the show, I will have an article up on Sports Not talking about those same players in print. So if you missed the show, I got you. It'll be up on Sports Not. Also, Toward the end of the week, I will be on TNT Sports. Woo! May or may not be a Raider uh, mention up on that show. <laughs> It'll be up on Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.30 uh, Pacific Time. Uh, just talking about the draft, just previewing some of the things that we could see or that could happen. Of course, like I said, the Raiders could be a topic because they are a team that's been in the discussion for a trade-up. So that might be a mention on the show. So tune into TNT Sports True TV. Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 Pacific time. Mo on the big screen. Yes. Although I get some listeners who tell us uh, that they watch this show on the big screen too. Which That's fine. Too. Now, now that you can use YouTube on your TV and all that stuff, I argue, real quick story, my my 16-year-old son drives me nuts. He's always got his phone, right? The phone thing is the thing. But, but I'm like, why are you... Dad, I'm just watching YouTube on my phone. Watch it on the TV. Oh, no, I want to do it. He's kind of like keeps it in his ear with his... I'm like, what are you watching? Like you don't want me to see what oh I don't want and it is it's all just stupid stupid teenage stuff but but like <laughs> he rather watched on the phone I'm like dude there's 85 inches right there you can watch it right there I'm old what can I say that's that's the way it is privacy Scott uh, that's exactly even though they're like gaming videos like there's nothing bad about them or anything me I'd be looking at girls if I was alive <laughs> now at that age uh, because you can, all you gotta do is scroll through Instagram it's crazy. Oh my gosh. Mm. Anyway, so um, yes, yeah, so we're going to have the mailbag next episode. Of course, we'll have sort of our, uh, we'll, we'll have a couple of shows between now and draft day. And then, of course, uh, we have all sorts of draft activity going on at Sports Not, of course, at Bleacher Report. Mo's going to have a bunch of stuff. We'll inform you guys on that stuff as we go along as well. We'll have somebody else on next week, too. We're going to have one more guest on about the draft, and that'll be just a couple days before the draft. So we'll see what's going on with the Raiders, and we'll find out exactly where they're at and what might be happening there. So stay tuned for that. Again, we want to thank Brian Baldinger for being with us. You can imagine how busy he is this time of the year, but since he is one of the family and he likes coming on, talking about the Raiders, obviously, uh, we appreciate him being on as well. Mo, I will talk to you on Thursday. Talk to you soon. All right. For our producer, Mike Robbie, a former Moten, I am Scott Colbranson. This has been Silver and Black today. Take care, everybody. We will talk to you on Thursday.